Welcome to the videos for 6810, my graduate computer architecture class. In class itself, last time we looked at uh, various technology trends and where systems are perhaps headed in the future. And before we actually start designing the components for the processor and the memory, let's first look at how you would go about evaluating one of these systems. So the obvious metrics are performance, energy, and reliability. And in this lecture, which is spread across two different videos, I'm going to focus on the performance aspect. But these same principles can also be applied for energy and, and for reliability. So first up, you know, let's look at the two, two uh, main metrics that we use to measure and report performance. The first is wall clock time or response time or just plain latency. So you know, when you start running a program, um, you start a stopwatch. When it finishes, you see how long it took. That basically tells you uh, the response time for that one program. The other metric is throughput. So if I have a batch of jobs in a fixed unit of time, you know, how many of these jobs can I actually push through the system? Right? So both of these metrics are, uh, you know, they're obviously meaningful and they are correlated, but, they're, they're, but, but they are clearly different from each other. So if I, for example, come up with an innovation that improves latency or response time, that usually also means that I'll improve throughput for the system. But the converse is not always true. So if I come up with a policy that maximizes throughput, it often leads to a reduction in my, in, in, in my latency metric, or it, it actually hurts my latency. So let's take a concrete example. So you know, here's my system. Let's say it's my laptop or desktop. And I introduce a policy which runs two programs at the same time. So I have program A running over here, and at the same time, I co-schedule program B. And I'm doing this to maximize utilization and maximize throughput. So when program A is stalled, you know, waiting for something to come back from disk, I'm at least making forward progress on B. And likewise, when B is stuck waiting for something, I'm at least using my system to execute uh, parts of program A. And, that, and, and by increasing this utilization, I'm making sure that this collective work that I need to get done gets done sooner. Okay, so you know if I maximize utilization with this policy, then that also leads to higher throughput. But by having this co-scheduling metric, I'm now going to slow down both program A and program B. If program A runs by itself, it finishes pretty fast. But when it runs in tandem with program B, you are now competing for all of these resources. You are going to compete for cache space, you're going to compete for memory space and so on. Right? And so the fact that both these programs are running together means that each program itself is going to be slowed down somewhat. Okay, So this policy of co-scheduling helps maximize throughput, but hurts my response time or it hurts my latency. Right? So these two metrics are connected, but they are clearly very different. So you know, having talked about these two metrics, now let's look at you know, how we actually go about measuring performance for a system. And this is usually done with what is called a benchmark suite, right? So if I'm trying to measure my, uh, my most recent laptop, I don't do it with just one program. I do it by running a whole slate of, of different programs. Okay, so SPEC is an organization which produces benchmark suites. And one of their flagship benchmark suites is CPU 2006, which is a collection of about 26 programs. And these programs are meant to stress your processor and your memory to some extent. And so you will run all of these 26 programs on your machine. You will measure the execution time for each of these uh, for each of these programs. And then finally, you will compress all of those execution times into one single number, which is then called the spec rating. And it makes sense to take all of these 26 different numbers and compress it into one number, right? I mean, when you describe your laptop, you don't do it by spelling out 26 different numbers. Okay, and, and likewise, when you write a paper, we don't say that, you know, my innovation improves performance by 10% on program one, you know, 12% on program two, and so on. You just report, you know, one single number. So we are interested in taking these 26 different execution times and compressing it into one single number, and that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, and I'm going to break up the discussion across both the videos. I'll focus on uh, an arithmetic mean metric in the first, in, in this video, and I'll look at, so, you know, these two AM metrics is what we'll cover in video one, and the geometric mean metric is what I'll cover in video two. Okay, so 
now let's 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 start with an example and let's look at how I'll use um, the arithmetic mean matrix. So instead of having an example with 25 or 26 different programs, let's just look at three different programs, P1, P2, and P3. And I'm trying to compare three different systems, systems A, B, and C. Okay, so the first metric I'm going to consider, which seems very intuitive, is sum of execution times. Right, so I run each of these three programs in each of my systems. So systems, system A's overall metric, its overall sum of execution times would be you know 10 plus 8 plus 25, which is 43. Likewise, the number for system B is 41, and for this is 46. You can see that I have recorded this video a few times already, so I already know the numbers. And now, you know, now that I have these numbers in place, you know, does this seem like a reasonable metric? Yes, it's, it seems just fine. You know, based on this, I'll conclude that system B is pretty fast. System A is next, followed then by system C. Okay, now there's one weakness that you can clearly spot over here. Right? If you compare system B and C, you know, P1 does better on system C, P2 does better on system C, it's only P3 that actually does worse on system C. And yet, when I added these numbers, it turns out the system C is really bad. And this is because, you know, this negative effect over here is really playing a strong role in my sum of execution times, right? If you look at these numbers in this column over here, they're almost double of the numbers in these two columns. So it plays a pretty strong role, or it, or, or it has a really large contributing effect to the sum of execution times. Okay, so any change that I do to P3, right, if I build a better system that somehow optimizes P3 really well, that should result in a much better sum of execution times, right? So that seems a little unfair that, that P3 is getting more importance than the other programs. Okay, so that's the weakness of using just the plain sum of execution times because the absolute values of those execution times do play a role. So we need to somehow normalize these numbers. Okay, so uh, the way to do it is to attach some weights to every single program so that when I add them up, they all have roughly the same importance. Okay, so how do I compute these weights? Let's start by making system A my reference machine. Okay, and so the weights I'm going to use are for P1, the weight is going to be 1 by 10. For P2, the weight is going to be 1 by 8. And for P3, it's going to be 1 by 25. So now when I add these up, I get a sum of weighted execution times of 3, where each program has contributed exactly 1. Okay, so now if I do the same metric for system C, I'm going to multiply it by the same weights, right? The weights are not changing. The weights have been determined based on this reference machine. And I'm going to use the same weights to measure every other machine. Okay, and that gives me you know, 0.8 plus 1 plus 1.2 also equals to 3. So based on this, I'll conclude that system C and system A have roughly the same behavior, the same performance. Okay, so this is known as the sum of weighted execution times. And it's a little bit more fair because it makes sure that every program has the same weight. And, you know, and, and this metric makes a lot of sense because it, repre it, 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 it represents behavior for one specific workload. It's a workload where P1, P2, and P3 all execute for roughly the same amount of time on a reference machine. And uh, this metric now tells me how that exact same workload will behave on a different machine. Okay, so this is technically a, a, this, this is technically a very superior metric. Its main disadvantage is that you need a reference machine, right? You need these weights, and they have to be determined on some reference machine. And you can see that you know if you're trying to um, if you're trying to come up with a universal reference machine that everyone should use, uh, it's, it's pretty obvious that, that Intel, IBM, AMD will all disagree on what that reference machine should be. So the other issue is that this reference machine has to be changed every few years, right? So not only is it hard to build consensus, you have to go through that exercise every few years. And this is because, you know, as systems evolve, the bottlenecks keep changing, right? So if P3, for example, is a memory bound program and the memory emerges as an even bigger bottleneck in future systems then it means that p3's execution time will grow over time right so accordingly it will need to use a smaller weight over time 
Okay, so you know, as uh, as as each program's execution time evolves with technology trends, the weights have to again be recomputed. Okay, so that's the problem with using some of weighted execution times. It's 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 technically a very sound metric, but it requires the use of a reference machine, and this reference machine has to be updated every few years. Okay, so next class we'll look at geometric mean, and my executive summary or uh, my punchline at the end of that class would be that uh, the geometric mean is technically not as superior a metric, but it does not have these practical difficulties. It does not need a reference machine. So in fact, this is the one that is actually being used for the spec rating.